The 6th Annual Midwest Peace of Liberty Fest will be held at the Circle Pine Center in Delton, Michigan, just outside of Kalamazoo, from Thursday, June 21st through Monday, June 25th. There will be all sorts of activities in a family and adult-friendly environment. Scheduled speakers include Dana Martin, Brett Vinat, Prof. CJ, and Scott Horton. Round up your friends and family members and get them registered today at mplfest.org. That's Mike, Papa, Lima, Fest. Dot org. Dogs welcome. Longer leashes recommended. And I think it is. It, it it's should be. It should be viewed as a solemn day where we realize that you know to follow the state to the death is folly, and we should you know have pity and sympathy for the people that died chasing that dream and not realizing how it was a terrible thing from the start. To the 156th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more Especially you, Ghana. More information about this at BIPCOT.org. I paused. I was waiting for you, Dave. I didn't think you were going to come in. Uh, what's up, everybody? We are back. This is Jeremy, and uh, we once ha- once again have a full packet of seeds this week, right? Is that what we're going with still? Please, somebody come up with something better, because that's what we're working with now. Anyway, something. Uh, yeah, this working is Jeremy, with- and Dave, Andre, and Shane are all here tonight. What is up, gentlemen? What's going on, fellas? Hello, everybody. Uh, it's just, what is this, a Monday right now we're recording? On? Yeah. We, it's uh, Memorial Day. Yeah, we are actually recording on Memorial Day. Uh, nor, you know, most of our longtime fans know we have been on the uh, Thursday night schedule Matrix. for, for a qu- quite a long time. But obviously, with uh, my situation changing very rapidly, because as we, as we record this on Memorial Day, the closing of my house is supposed to happen on Thursday. Uh, I've been getting congratulations from a lot of people. I'm still not getting excited until it act- until I actually sign those papers, and I'm being told there's a check being made out to me you know like i really i i, I just you don't so believe much, it till you see it yeah there's just been so much that's put in my i mean as dude I, at this point i wouldn't either like if you just add it all together if you just wrote it all down on a sheet of paper if everyone could see the whole picture here they'd be like yeah i wouldn't believe this until it was until I, until i was tail lights on whatever the interstate is out of new york city well i'm not even <laughs> that's the thing this even even if the house the sale of the house actually happens which it, it, it better i i probably will go postal if it doesn't on Thursday, so like it's I'm gonna stop. <laughs> because now now as it, as it is, like I said as it is we're recording this on Memorial Day and I have uh, packed up the ma- the majority <laughs> the majority of my house is now packed up in the storage unit out, out in my garage. Uh, the only thing left is like my TV, uh, my couch, and my dining room table. Although the couch and the dining room table are getting tossed on the way out because they're both old and rickety, and uh, and then my clothes, and then a, you know some stuff in the kitchen and whatnot, and pretty much everything else is getting packed and ready to roll. And uh, yeah, if it doesn't go through, I'll, I'll go crazy. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely. I I've been. I mean, that's why I've been chronicling this whole thing because people don't believe me when I tell them the insanity. I mean, the, the, the latest thing was I found out that the, my agent was actually getting a hell of a lot more money than I thought because she misspoke twice when I spoke to her um, and also did it again when I confronted her on the situation. And it's like, oh, you're- I you're mean, everyone idiot. deals with just a little bit of bad luck, right? Yeah. Just everyone. Yeah. Like, that's just natural life. But it's like- Well, if it's constant- you're in a th- slump. If it's, con- <laughs> if it's constant, though, can it be bad? Isn't it just- your luck. No, no. It's <laughs> if it's just, a constant thing, it's no, yeah, it's just me. Well, you know, I've I've said it before. I mean, you know, my grandmother used to tell me, you know, the old saying: if you had, if you didn't have bad luck, you'd have no luck at all. Yeah, my grandmother used to say that to me when I was a kid, because, you know, things happen. Anyway, but yeah. So, well, at least you didn't enlist and get killed in some war for no reason. This is true. This is very true. Well, I've we've talked about that on the show before. Actually, my my dad, that was the one. Or thing. get forcibly enlisted. 
Well, yeah. L- luckily, I was born after uh, the uh, the draft had been abolished. Uh, we were talking Bare- we were barely, talking, we were, barely. Yeah, we were talking before barely. the show about how old Jane and barely. I are, but no, we're not. But we're dates. not that old. <laughs> it was uh, days. Well, and you know what? To be fair, it actually hasn't been abolished. Oh, it hasn't. You true. Still have to it hasn't. Sign up selected, for selected service. service. That, selected service you. is still a thing, and that's exactly what that is. Thank, thank, thank you for correcting me because I was about to go into that, and I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. That's like because I'm like, oh my god, but I did sign up for that. But yeah, you're past the up. age now, so shh. yeah, now I. Am. You really hit the sweet spot, you know. Oh yeah, finally. <laughs> But well, no, we actually, I want to. I want to take a. I want to take a minute it. to talk. Here he is about bitching about no. all his bad hey, luck, okay. and he didn't get drafted, and all he's right. too old. You, wow! You, you, you brought up the military <laughs> thing multiple times. Let, let's let the one military former military member on, on the on the show actually speak. Here we go. Let's go. go, go for I'm it. a Andre. damn war hero. No, no, that's not true at all. Don't take me out of my word. What's What's uh, your thoughts on this Memorial Day? What's your first well, knee, um, knee jerk reaction? Well, okay, so it's really easy to say, oh, yeah, my troops, it's another flag-waving holiday. And it, to some extent, it is. And of course it is, it's because it's every time you bring up the armed forces, it's always flag-waving, USA, yada, yada, whatever. But uh, this, it, you really have to highlight the difference between something like Veterans Day, which honors the people who have served, who are still alive, and uh, Armed Forces Day, which is you know just a uh, salute the troops type thing. With Memorial Day, which honors the people that died in service. That's not to say, it, the way I look at it is Memorial Day doesn't speak to whether or not the cause they fought for was just. I mean, uh, all of us here would clearly agree that there was no cause that was just to fight. But uh, when you think of it in terms of the way we think of it, you know, where these people really just died for, I mean, essentially nothing. They, they died following the orders of the bureaucrats that were appointed over them. And I think it is, it, it, it's should be, it should be viewed as a solemn day where we realize that, you know, to follow the state to the death is folly. And we should, you know, have pity and sympathy for the people that died chasing that dream and not realizing how it was a terrible thing from the start. So that's the way I look at it. I, I actually, I actually take the time out to, to, sit back and reflect on Memorial Day, whereas Veterans Day and and Arms, Armed Forces Day is just like, yeah, whatever. It's another stupid day. But uh, Memorial Day, I think, has a little bit more meaning because this is, you know, this is a time to reflect on the people that died and what that means and what, what that sacrifice means, which for us, that sacrifice was ultimately self-defeating. I mean, you, you can't serve the the machinery of the state and expect to get anything other than a headstone in a cemetery somewhere and a life unfulfilled cut short for no reason, especially the people that were drafted and died in war. I mean, that's, that's huge. That's an enormous thing that really needs to be remembered and repeated over and over and over again. Yeah. And you know, recompense at some point, maybe to the families who lost the people. Well, it's uh, it's really ridiculous. Well, uh, I think that's unfortunately out of the realm of possibility with the way thing, everything else works. But uh, it's actually uh, I wanted to say it's, that's a really good point, Andre. Yeah, maybe not even monetarily, but like at least like sheesh, well, an apology well, would go free so, dinners so at far. Applebee's yeah. for the go. rest of your but, life. But, yeah. uh, but hold on, uh, it's a it's a really good point that you made, Andre. Actually, and uh, I, I was actually I, I was starting to think about something along these lines earlier today because obviously I'm somebody who you know in the past has been very harsh, you know. I actually saw a couple people remarking today, as much as I don't pay attention to social media uh, these days, uh, I actually happened to skim it a couple of times today because I was trying to pay attention to the stupid marketplace because I'm still trying to sell a bunch of crap before I get out of here. But uh, the uh, I saw a couple of people remarking about how they're kind of getting turned off by everybody who gets really nasty on these days. And I actually made a meme today, which will probably end up being the show pick for the uh, for this show just because it fits in, even though we're not going to... And, and it'll be, you know, it'll be a couple weeks by because by the time this actually comes out, it'll be two weeks from now. And uh, which... By the way, uh, you know, since we already saw the future, Shane, what was the what was the price of Bitcoin? <laughs> Fifteen thousand. Oh. Yeah, there right. you go. Well, I was just <laughs> yeah. Shane was off a lot. No, 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 no. Shane, caught, that was a an official Shane Buell prediction. Yeah, I, I, I caught off guard. Anyway, uh, I, I I did make I did make a meme today, but somebody remarked on uh, on it saying that this uh, out of the because I, I made a mention of the you know the high holy days of government, which uh, Memorial Day, Armed Forces Day, you know all the ones you know Veterans Day, like you were talking about, Andrew, they they all fit in there and. I, somebody remarked that, that, you know, this one is the worst, you know, they, they think this one is the worst, you know, as far as being like uh, being an anarchist and having to deal with it. And I, I immediately went to, you know, agree with the person. And then I started to think about it. I'm like, actually, no, wait a minute. 
And I was I, I didn't get as, as deep into it as you did, and you obviously put it a lot more eloquently than I probably would have. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that's a really good point that you know, despite our you know, despite our feelings about the state, despite our feelings about people that have, what what people have done for the state, yeah, the, if you if you look at it. If you take a step back and you look at all the all the different state holidays and like the way they celebrate this type of stuff, and, and yes, the, is the military and the, and the horrible actions of the military celebrated regularly? Absolutely, but yeah, on this one particular day, yeah, I definitely see that point, and uh, I'm really glad that you brought that up because I think it's. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think view it's Memorial powerful. Day as a testament to the folly of the state, like the ultimate folly of the state, because only the state is capable of conducting warfare on this on the scale that costs hundreds of thousands of human lives and these are the hundreds and thousands of human lives that we remember on memorial day so for me this day is a reminder that the state is the ultimate evil and though i mean we should mounds we should of cherish dead our bodies warriors, behind right? it yeah i mean whether right. and, and i've always had disrespect them like that throwing them in meaningless wars yeah exactly that's that's what it comes down to it's it's taking a step back and realizing look we've thrown men and you know young men into a meat grinder and for what for for whose aggrandizement for whose freedom right because we always joke about like you know what are my freedoms doing over in you know the middle east how do they get over there and like today is a day to remember like there are actually you know we like we can joke about it and we can make quips but there are actually people dying over this yeah for no reason like yeah. right at all. it's essentially oh, yeah. no reason at all so yeah, that's that's like, what i take away from memorial day it's like if you There's really cared about the troops right now <laughs> Yeah, if you really cared about the troops, you wouldn't want to put more of them in harm's way. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, uh... It's just, they think people, like, libertarian community, anarchist community, tends to go way hard on the troops, right? Because most people understand that the state rests on the back of the enforcement class. So, it, we all get that. But the, the enforcement class, the defense class, the warrior class, whatever you want to call that person... That person that says, I'll fight for my tribe. I'll fight for my people. I don't care. I'll put my life on the line. We have to have those people. Those people have to exist and they have to be able to flourish and be nourished and actually do what they need to be done, uh, what needs to be done. What is a marketplace demand, which is security. These fake, phony occupational wars aren't. I mean, Germany is still a nation after World War II. I mean, if that's not the biggest puppet show thing I've ever heard in my life. Well, I was there was two nations for a while, wasn't it? <laughs> but either way, you know what I'm saying? Like, it should be there should be no more like like should just all be command and conquer. I don't get it. It's like a puppet show. So like it's it. Wow. I I I just don't want people that are either military or ex-military here are hear our content and think oh they just mindlessly bash military not like most of it is us wanting the best for you 99 percent of it is us wanting the best for you wanting you getting working in a private military protecting private land you know that's what yeah. we want for you i that's i would love the, nothing like, i would love nothing more if you know we could dismantle the state and all of the soldiers who have all of these useful skills, I would love to be able to put those skills back to use. I would love to go be a cavalry scout for a private military corporation. I'd love that. You can't that would be, be retarded amazing. and go, sorry for the hard R. You can't be short-sighted and say, uh, there aren't people out there that don't want that. There's not people out there that want my shit. Like, there's always someone out there that wants your shit. Okay? And they'll they will kill you for it. So you got to have people out there willing to kill them before they kill or take your stuff, basically. And that's just the facts of the life. Or provide such a hard target that they get dissuaded from trying. Correct. Right. Lockbox. Incentives matter. No. But anyway, so that was, that was my thoughts on the matter. I don't want to... I don't want to monopolize the conversation. No, no. Like I said, I it's it's a, it's I think a really great apropos. point, and it's a uh, it's it. Like I said, it's it's definitely. I think it's it's one that needs to be uh, you know uh, it needs to be heard because there are still a lot of uh, you know anarchists and stuff that do. I mean, obviously, not, we're not telling anybody. Who, uh, I'm not telling anybody what to do. But yeah, I used to be one of those people. I used to be big on the like the troops or welfare hordes pages and groups and all that stuff. I used to be really big with all that stuff. 
Oh yeah, and, dude. I've got know, screenshots whole, of death threats. Whole, 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 I, see, I never got that many of them. I didn't get my death threats until my arrest last year. That's what that's when all my death threats came in. You know, um, at some point in, in my mind, it clicked that there's literally people with like blackout PTSD that have like sent me messages that like if I ever see you in real life or find you, I'll just kill you on the spot. And I'm like, damn. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. And you, I'm not, you know, like. That's just like at some point that clicked to me. I was like, okay, these people have to be. We have to find a completely different message for them. Yeah. Um, uh, well, see how they, and I mean, I've, because I've, all I've it been, is is we want them to be able to have the same understanding of us that even in our occupation, even in our life, uh, you know, and what we want to do, our careers, the state has interfered and completely bastardized it. And they. Once that knowledge is, is grasped and understood by them and they can then look at their job in the same light, it's like, well, shit, I'm not fighting for the right things. They can then accurately adjust and fight for the correct things. Exactly. And I'm, I mean, I've been the first to say that, uh, you know, the moral culpability for actions taken in combat rests with the person doing the action. You know, the, the order giver, of course, is, is morally culpable, but the ultimate liability, you know, s sits on the shoulders of the guy pulling the trigger on the, on the rifle. But that's not to say that you know what we what soldiers do. What I you, you know learned how to do is a bad thing. I don't think that at all. I think it is a necessary thing, and I think learning these these skills will ultimately equip me and others like me to be able to provide security and force protection in a in a much more moral and socially conducive way. You know, without relying on the state. Yeah. So it, and again, it's like like Dave said, it's all about you know tailoring the message to where it fits with these people. Because you know, and I'm sure everybody's noticed this, veterans are the ones that really don't like big government. Like by a huge degree, veterans really, really don't like this big government deal. Well, they, yeah, the they U.S. military lean libertarian is, is why we are, aren't a EU like just vassal state right now is like how conservative and like, nah, we'll just coup you. Well, that, that was the U S military. That was like, yeah, that was shown during, uh, was it the 08 election that Ron Paul had like the, or was it, I don't remember. Was it that the, one? Well, that was 08 and it was 2012 too. Where, where he had, yeah. Where the, his, his con he had the biggest yeah. amount of and contributions Ron Paul, directly for the he military. Got screwed. Ugh. Yeah, but I mean, like he had like the military like sewn up like veterans and everybody. Everybody was voting for all. All yep. of them were voting. Yeah, for military Paul. was behind him like yeah. 100%. Yeah, sure. yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Else. So, so I mean that that just you know I mean that says a lot right there because all those people that are still that invested in the system that they still believe you know despite what they've been through they still think that you know this is the way that, it, that you fix things. <laughs> look, look what look what they no, all I, voted. Hold on. Can that I should go tell on a you quasi something. rant for five seconds? Uh, I guess so. Dude. Oh, yeah, you have five seconds though for real. Starting now, America, you really fucked five, up. Okay, four, you you could have had three, Ron Paul, and now we two, got motherfucking Donald one. Trump. All right, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> Good rant, Dave. <laughs> Good rant, Dave. I'm sorry. Continue, Dave. Did you have more? I was just kidding. <laughs> no, just that's just swallow that and think about it for five fucking days. That it's that ridiculous. We could have had Ron Paul. Well, uh, but see, now we got uh, motherfucking. Uh, yeah, but I, I art of the fucking deal apprentice. You know, I like some of the stuff he's done. I dislike some of the other stuff he uh, uh, he's done. But to me, I see nothing but a complete puppet right now, and that everyone thinks isn't a puppet. He's literally Pinocchio. Haven't I been saying that for a while? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're just marching towards like complete war. And it's like, no, nah, we're doing that. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. And it's like, this is just the same agenda that would be playing out if Hillary got one. I, if I, she won. I know. I, I seem to re I seem to recall a little voice yeah, no, saying no, that. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about internationally. Yeah. No, I know. Uh, nationally. No, internationally. Certain stuff is changing, but the war stuff. But that's not what really fucking matters in the whole I, grasp I know. of the thing. Is is the. <laughs> And like I tried to say, during if the whole world's like, no, America, we're not going to trade with you. Like America's fucked. I, I know. But like I tried to say during the election, I mean, it wasn't the only one. Plenty of people are like, this is the thing. I no, it would have been just played out the same with Hillary. The same. So yeah, like, it just, you just people are going to have to wake around. up to say, like, it doesn't matter who we elect. Something's got to stop immediately now. 
Well, or it's yeah. getting, yeah, getting I don't worse. Think I, like, I mean, I think Ron Paul was our last shot, like a, a chance. At unfortunately, peaceful, like, it, it, you know, well, I mean, see, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I don't think uh, uh, Paul, uh, Ron Paul. I'm not think. inciting violence. But what I'm saying here is <laughs> saying that if if Ron Paul would have won, the laws could have slowly changed to completely divert and avoid the course that we are completely completely set on but but what do you but see that's the thing though that's what i was trying to say even with even with paul like i i mean yes he's 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 definitely one of my favorite statists and i think he tried to do a lot of good stuff but in the end do you really think he would have been able to accomplish much just based well, you, on like, how, right, the, yeah, how if you're in a plane like, if you're in, no no no, no. He, he would have been painted Here's into the a only corner. question i have if you're in a, 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 a jet plane and you have a pilot saying i can crash land this thing or i can try to take us down real slow and ease us in What's the what options do you have? But but again, you want the you want the but, but you but you're talking. But you see, this is the part. This is the part I think you're missing because you said it yourself. I about think Trump. Trump's gonna crash land us. No, but Trump's <laughs> Trump's just another puppet. Paul, not that he not that he would have been a puppet, but you don't because I think he's the puppet to crash land us. No, is because that, the, what I'm because, saying. Oh, I that, that, I've heard that you know speculated too, and but the the point is that it doesn't matter who is in there because they're not really in control. So how much really would have changed under right. Paul? Because for all for all the the good that Ron Paul did, well, he was going to eliminate the Fed and, like that was his I, I, first again, promise, he, and if that would have happened, he would have been in control. But, I, but again, Dave, what are the if chances? that would have happened? You know, so that would have been step one. Okay, Dave, stop talking. You know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The chance of that happening. Histor like, please give me any historical examples. I'll wait. There are none, I can tell you. Because Andrew, it's not Andrew going Jackson to happen. actually vetoed, Andrew vetoed Jackson, the federal and then, bank, the national bank. But again. <laughs> Andrew Jackson, and then there was one other, and then Van Buren as well. But, and, and, it know, right back, still, and, and, and then it came right back. And then it came right back. It came right back. It was like it, a pimple. It, it can't happen yeah, I, now because of since the Federal Reserve was instituted. This, like, it's not going to happen. The only way that the United States Dave, can hold fix on a second. This I, let me finish this fucking thought. Banking. For the love of God, Dave, shut okay, up. Go, go ahead. <laughs> the point is, it doesn't matter who was in there. For all the good Ron Paul did, while you know, for trying to educate people all the time, is what did he actually uh, actually accomplish in um in his position in the position he was in? Pretty much nothing, because you can't. Ah, uh, yeah. It's 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 not possible. So he would have wanted to do things just like Trump claimed he wanted to do things. It doesn't matter. Once you get in, you figure out that there's things you you want to do. And he may tr he may have tried to go ahead and tell people, hey, they're not letting me do these things, but that's not going to change anything because <laughs> they're still it's still not going to get. No, done. I just think Ron Paul is completely out of their. I don't think Ron Paul is on their plan at all. It, what I mean is, I think Trump might be part of their plan, but he might be on one side of the uh, issues. Oh, he's just he, as far as how the Trump plan is an opportunist. Plays I've out. said it a million times. That's what he like. He's an opportunist, so he got in the position. And well, you don't become a billionaire without becoming. <laughs> Without being an opportunist. Well, yeah, but that, but so he so he doesn't you know he doesn't have an ideology. He's uh you know that's why I love the, the one Trump. He, 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 even though he won't ever come back again on the show. But long a long time ago we had Jim Jesus on and he you know he describes Trump as a Rorschach because that's really what he is because nobody has any idea what Trump is really about. He really is a human Rorschach because he's just whatever anybody else wants to project on. The the strongest <laughs> inclination I have on Trump is that he is a fr that he is just. A puppet of the new world order. If you want to go the simplest, just <laughs> if you want to go to the simplest conspiracy theory. <laughs> yes, is that basically. What I mean, I can, would dictate. Uh, I, yes, uh, yes. I mean, if you look at certain things, certain buildings he has, they're basically temples to the god Apollo. Oh Jesus! Or the the Roman god Apollo. <laughs> but that that aside. I don't you know, think he's. There are I don't think he's smart enough to be involved in stuff like that. I mean, for God's sakes, the guy doesn't even fucking you've read. You said that a billion times. He's basically a genius, dude. Okay, you don't get it. You don't. You don't get it. No, he's, he's not. He trolls everybody. He's not a genius. He all right. Well, he's either the best Manchurian candidate or he's a flat out genius. <laughs> he's an idiot. Was it four dimensional chess? Yeah, at this point, it's like 457th dimensional chess or some shit. No, like, yeah, it's past it chess. Is. We're playing. Oh, no, it we're, is. It is. We're playing. <laughs> We're playing bat bat chess, bat bat gammon chess. <laughs> we're playing underwater. It's, a new, it's playing a new style of board I game that only the uh, the aliens on uh, gamma reticula it's play. Like an underwater okay, blindfolded it's got bat multiple gammon. dimensions. It just it feels like, like to, me, to me Trump keeps it, it keeps repeating the same things that this is happening, that this is happening, and then you go look at the news and it's like 
the the same agenda is rolling out. Trump's not stopping any of it. Of course, and it's not. like well, we're reconsidering TPP. TPP is literally like if you just want to call the show the fuck over, like oh, well, you might as well just wrap it up, boys. That's it. That Trans-Pacific Partnership is it. Oh, I don't think that so. That sets the way to make the Amero, and then after that, you combine the, uh, you make uh, the SDR, which will be the, uh, essentially, Special drawing the rights. Euro for, it'll be the Euro <laughs> for the, uh, for the, I'm so confused. All what of are we Asia. talking about here? And then you'll have all three currencies just bind into one when they collapse, because all fiat collapses eventually, because it's fake. And that's what they're wanting He's, to do, man. That's where they're setting up is this global. That's what they want to do. Currency. But look how long it's taken for them to get to the, even the Amero. You know what I mean? It's it's been held up for twenty years now. At so, least I started that, yeah. that when I started research. Yeah, that was like back in the mid nineties. They were talking about what would about be pro business setting up a uh, new currency that isn't going to collapse America. Call it the Amero. <laughs> it, it packed, already have it, one. It's packaged by Trump. If we package it by tr- if packages if it's packaged by Trump, then they're, the the Patriots are going to just blah, 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 and it's going to over, no resistance. Well, we already have Monero, so we don't need Amero. <laughs> they, they, can, they can make Monero. They can make Amero all they want. I'll stick with Monero. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> right. The problem is, is like, what can you pay oh your taxes? Oh my God, Dave! In? You so you so need a pop filter. That's, Oh, my bad. I keep forgetting what, that. Every, every time we do a show, I forget it until you start talking what's, and hit the P What words. is legal tender? That's what matters. Well, yeah, exactly. They can, they can make, you, you know, that's that's the point. They can make the Amero all they want, but if they make it legal tender and, you know, they take away everything else, then yes, then it becomes a royal pain in the ass. You know, so. I, I don't see I, why they wouldn't uh, do it because Canada is... I don't know what Canada is doing. It feels like Canada is moseying its way right on into a complete collapse. Uh, same thing with Mexico. It feels like Mexico is about oh, to rush on, just, right towards oh, the Civil War. Oh, come on. Justine, Justine Trude, if, Trudeau is doing a great job up there, isn't she? He, whatever she is. I like that you called her Justine because she is Justine Trudeau. <laughs> hey, she's a person. I, look, we could talk about Trudeau for hours just on – from that, the, our, our, I, our I leanings. Even, I don't even, you know? like, I haven't delved that deeply into Trudeau. I just he's know a he's moron. A goofy, he's just, he has a goofy motherfucker. He's a go, he's a goofy, he's a goofy asshole. Unfortunately has some power. Um, so I'm just like, uh, that's, my, that's about Ugh. the extent that I know about him. I mean, he is, he I, know is that, I just doubt, know that there's people statesman. that have worked he their hearts. A dummy. Yeah, that's definitely straight up dumb. And like dumb. it's the, it's the I, simple though. Actually, I always I, I will say that like the most I probably looked into him is like you know the the the, the thing that gets thrown around the conspiracy. Talk, you know, we're talking about conspiracy theories. Um, that he's uh, Castro's kid, and uh, you see that you know he looks him. like him though. I know, like like that. I looked into a little bit because I'm like, if you see those convincing. pictures, it's like it is kind of creepy. <laughs> a little bit, love it, love it. <laughs> But you could, it's not even just like, it's not, it's not even like, oh, I could see the resemblance. It's like, whoa, motherfucker. (laughs) That's pretty, plus he's he's like a communist and open communist. (laughs) Here's my thing. Okay. There's people that have worked their fingers to the bones to save up, to buy stuff and have been living nice life and build communities in Canada that are just normal people that don't want to deal with all this horse shit a driven agenda that's being crammed down their throat right now. And eventually those people are going to go either I'm not paying or we're got to, we've got to fight. That's going to uh, happen in Canada. If this Trudeau administration keeps pushing further and further and further. Aren't, but aren't they okay. like notorious? Well, just what like had, nice just had what's probably going to happen. Well, what's probably going to happen is Alberta, conservative which is the rule most, uh, in, yeah, I was going to say Alberta is the most conservative province up there. And if uh, Trudeau keeps pushing, because Alberta is like the the economic center of Canada, right? That's where yeah. most of the economic activity happens. It's not British Columbia. It's not you know Saskatchewan or anywhere else. It's Alberta. So if Trudeau keeps pushing, Alberta could just decide, oh, okay, well, fuck it. I guess we're just going to be our own country then. And they'll probably still be in the Commonwealth because... Or Trump goes, hey, Alberta, you're more than welcome to, to become Americans. Well, that, that would make you happy, right, Andre? That would be a step in the right direction, I mean, right? That, that, would be, idea. that would be so stoked. I'd be so I'm, stoked. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not opposed. I mean, we've talked about that before, obviously. I mean, my, my ideas on secession have changed over the years, but I'm still not opposed to seeing other people try it and uh, see if they can get it to work, even if it's even if it's still like in the status paradigm. Like, they're just, you know, because well, I... Well, see, and here's the thing, though. I think it could... I really think it has a chance of success, especially in Canada. Because Canadian politics, as I understand them, are 
so completely different. Like it's a it's a totally different culture politically than it is here. And of course it is because they're still, you know, part of the common. Well, if right? they were they going to lose control, say, and- God save the queen. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, they're going to lose control, but how much going to exert control? See, I don't, I don't. No, see, I don't think so, though. I don't think so because we don't live in that. They're paradigm a vassal anymore. state, very much. So. I know, oh, but yeah. they don't live. But we don't live in that paradigm anymore. And Canada has always straddled the fence between being, you know, like the frontier and being, you know, a loyal British colony. Because while Australia is absolutely the wilderness, like it's way off on the other side of the world, Canada has always, you know, felt like it's been part of. The UK, like they've always felt like they've been essentially English, right? Except for the, except for Quebec, but nobody talks about Quebec because they're worthless. <laughs> um, oh, leave the so French, like, leave the Frenchies alone. Oh God, leave they're the terrible. Quebecers like, alone. You, they, the, the Quebecois like to think that they're so. <laughs> I have Quebecois the, friends, oh, I and they fuck I've you met, up. I so know. superior to the rest of Canada, Some they like people, relate so I, much. I, to I got French. nothing bad to say about any Quebecois ever. Ever and even the Nothing and even bad. the French don't like them. The French don't like them. No, that well, like, they don't even want to. They don't even want to accept. Well, but yeah, but, but Quebec but, is like yeah, but, a francophone but, country. But who likes the French? So like, is that does that really? No, but that that's really what matter? I'm saying. Like even even the shitty people don't want you. Yeah, like, but how bad on, they do have you to, have to be? They have to. They have. To, They'll accept the Ivory Coast than a and conflict diamonds before they accept the Quebec. Yeah, I'm, I'm just but diamonds, you know, bro. I mean, just putting on. that out there. <laughs> yeah, but like conflict. Either way, we've diamonds. sidetracked. Shane, what's what, what's been up in your life? Oh, I've, we're I haven't not, been no, in this here is, for they, what three or four shows. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> yes, I've heard Shane's voice. In I like know. I want. I, I was going. To, I was going. I to, listened to a show the other day. We don't have to change subjects just to get Shane involved. We could just say, "Hey, Shane, what are your thoughts?" Well, there? we're talking about some crazy shit here a second ago. The You're Canadian. Always, Shane, what are your thoughts? Hmm. Well, right. on Canada or on what's going on with me? Yeah, on Canada. What kind of segue are we making? Uh, okay, no, on well, Canada. Let's start with I mean, Canada. For, for let's always, go forget to you. Dave, for always forget Dave. Both. Just ignore Dave. <laughs> Just ignore me. Well, yeah, Trudeau definitely doesn't seem to be a statesman. And uh, as far as I know, um, Canada can do whatever Canada wants to do, and it doesn't really affect me that much. So I'm not too worried about it. Oh, come on. That's Aren't no fun. Um, <laughs> no, I, I heard you had a massive well, so, maple syrup addiction. <laughs> mm, <maybe so. laughs> um, what was I was going to say though? Well, it, it's, it's all right if Shane doesn't have that much input on it because I, I I did, did want to say I mean because it was brought up about the whole you know Canadians actually like not putting up with it and like even the people in Alberta be kind of being like a few. I mean, while I like to see it to happen, I don't know. Aren't are, I mean aside you know obviously leaving out the friend the Frenchies again, um, aren't Canadians like notoriously nice and that's why all this stuff happens because they're just too nice to fight yes. back? Isn't that part of the problem? Yeah, see, that's <laughs> not true. That's not true. Or at least it, it, it depends on where you're from. Well, like so. Okay, so so you know, case in point, my girlfriend is Canadian. She's from Alberta. She she lives. Oh, that's right. right. I Canada. forgot that. And uh, yeah, she has nothing positive to say about Canadians at all. As far as she's concerned, every like the vast majority of Canadians she's ever met, from British Columbia, you know, to Ontario, they're assholes. They're like the biggest assholes in the world. Oh, nice. They're just utter douches. All right, so, like, so everybody's nozzles. assholes. Great. Uh, that's good. I like yeah. it. I prefer it that way. <laughs> they they annoyed me because I thought they were too nice. That actually that actually actually makes me feel better. <laughs> no, Every, I think the whole I, too nice know, thing is just because they have all these stupid social justice laws, so like everybody thinks that they're nice because Yeah, but isn't that isn't e- isn't that more recent though? Like that's only been in the past like 10 20 years. Like that that stigma the, the well, nice I stigma mean, has been 10, around 10 20 forever. years. That's that's as long as I've known, oh, you know, well, I've obviously. known of the Oh the, god, damn it. Here we go again. Age, age you know, I'm aging myself. I know I'm being so ageist right now. Just wait till I start being ableist. It's going to happen. It's not right. Uh-oh. It's not Fuck right. Fuck your wheelchair. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You better not go trans. If you go transphobic, well, if any, I, if, I don't know if any I'll do. Transphobic? <laughs> I have no phobia against trance and house music, man. I <laughs> like all electronic uh, music equally. So, some, right. of it, some of it's a little uh, too much for me. I said trans. The Rude Sandstorm. That's phobic. all I have to say on the matter. That's a good song. I don't know what that is. I do. I don't know. Anyway. That was sex. I'm going to break out the, okay, so, the light sticks right now. Well, I'd like to see. Anyways, Shane, what's been up with you? For real. I haven't heard what's going on. Job's right. still going well, good. Maybe if you showed up at the show more often, Dave, you'd, you'd find out. <laughs> yeah, the job's still going good. Uh, I still, you know, only work about four hours a day. I mean, four days a week, and I get about 10 hours a day. So I get my 40, and then I have a three-day weekend. And uh, 
I actually, you know, been talking to someone from Florida, and uh, they're coming to visit. Florida woman. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, Florida woman. It's coming to visit in about Ooh. 28 days, which coincidentally, this is the 28th, and there's 28 days left. So, do, do, and, do, uh, do, then, do, do, do. 28 so exactly days four later. weeks. Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly that's where weeks. my mind went to, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I I, uh, I, I hope I, I you see Cillian there. Murphy run run for your yeah. life. So, uh, so I'm gonna go to the the fest in Michigan, and then uh, right after that, uh, she's coming to visit for Woo-hoo, a week. So I'm gonna have a awesome, really man. good time at the end of June. Yeah, yeah, cool. you will. Mm-hmm. That's it. Wow, that's, uh, wow, wow. <laughs> well, oh, awesome, yes, man. I'm right. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I. Uh, I've been farming my ass off. Sorry for missing all the shows, guys. It's, nah, I'm just busting just... you. You actually made the, la- the couple of the last ones that you did. I just busted your chops. Uh, I don't even remember anymore. That's, I don't that's, know. That's, that's I, how I we remember started I had the, to cancel. That's like, how we start. Minute. That's how we started the show. By well, no, last week obviously. Well, for 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 those of you listening, the, the, last week's show obviously was just Shane and I with our uh, guest Luis uh, Fernando Mises. But uh, obviously you missed that one. But I think yeah, before two that, family members showed yeah. up. Now I remember it now. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, well, they, coincidentally, I missed that show as well, and that's also because family showed up. My parents uh, flew in, and they is, ended up coming in <laughs> quite a lot fine. later than I had we, expected them to. Which is fine. We actually had a conversation that continued to flow rather well until I lost my place at the end because I thought we were stopping. And then Luis is like, no, I have more time, but you know, because there are no ham-fisted segues or anything. Well, I can't um, wait to hear it anyway, I haven't heard what, from Luis in a while because he got banned from Facebook and then kind of went silent for a while. He's been back on Facebook for about a month they like, or so. They, they banned him, him hard. <laughs> yeah, they, they tracked his IP. They were uh, they were tracking his IP and not letting him. Uh, well, it was the kratom, wasn't it? I think it was the. the that's kratom the old. That that's the thing. That's what uh, the speculation was. I don't think there was any ever. It was ever any conclusive that you know decision on what it what it was. But that's what everybody just figured it was because that was the only thing that made sense. Because you know we all know Luis. Yeah. Luis is a super nice guy. You know he basically right. posts about shamanism. He's and not saying any shit. We're not saying. So like, why would he get? Banned? Well, no, but not we even. Wouldn't. Like he's not. But he's he's even like he's he's usually at least on social media for the most part he's usually a lot like friendlier and nicer than some of us, like me especially are. And uh, you know <laughs> the only thing he could have possibly done was the kratom thing that you know. But yeah, he, he was definitely banned for a while. And I think that's also why like PayPal and a bunch of other payment systems have dropped him is because of the, the Kratom. And uh, yeah, well, so that probably had something to see, do with it. As far as I know, Kratom is there's it's not really that big of a deal, right? It's just like, oh yeah, it's Kratom. And then like you're it's like Um uh, Yeah, it's I mean I've It's like I've, coffee. Well, it's it's actually the the plant is actually in the coffee family, right? It's a relative of coffee. Relative, yeah. Uh, uh, so um yeah. Um, but no, it's uh, what call it? I mean, I've I've done some, and uh, I've tried a couple. Of, I've tried multiple strains, and uh, yeah, I mean, what, I dig what's, it. What would be your like? What would be your like if you could compare it to some other drug? What would uh, you do? Like, what would you compare it to? I don't even really know if I could, because like I try, like uh, I got uh, originally when I got some, I got I, I I may I may or may not have gotten some from Luis originally, and <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I think what I got, the, I got the <laughs> allegedly red, the, the red strain, the green strain. Well, he sells it openly, so um, I, the the red strain, the green strain, and the white strain, and uh, the red strain is supposed to be for the pain, I think, and uh, right. it definitely felt it, it, like I it like I had like a headache and some muscle ache at the time, and it definitely made everything you know relax. I mean, it relaxed me to the point where I felt like I didn't feel the pain anymore for a while. And uh, I was just kind of mellow. And the green one was supposed to be, uh, I guess, energy or some, something along those lines. And I it's definitely... Like a volume? No, no, not necessarily. Well, okay. Hold, Basically, the, sorry, the way on. that it works is it kind of blocks the uh, transmission of pain in the body, very similar to the way opiates do, but it doesn't have a lot of the same side effects as opiates, such as like uh, breathing uh-huh. suppression and, and uh, slowing of heart rate, stuff like that. But um, for me, experientially, it pretty much is like herbal Vicodin for the most part. It gets rid of my aches and pains from you know my that's accident. A good, that, and stuff. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good description. The red. The red one would definitely. So fall I, I kind of pe- pegged it there, like Valium herbal, Vicodin, that kind herbal, of herbal. Vicodin. No, Valium is a benzodiazepine, and um, yeah, that's a that's a mood stabilizer. Yeah, right? Vicodin is an opioid. It's a synthetic opiate that's based on like uh, you know opium. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a what very I good think? description. Like and now, well, okay, so I've tried Clonopin. the green. That's yeah. what I'm thinking about. Yeah, okay, I've tried the green, mm-hmm. and uh, I would say it, it doesn't really provide you a ton of energy, or at least I didn't feel like it I provided felt me more a ton f- of energy. I did. I get a boost, and I get fo- and I feel focused. 
Well, and that's what that's what I was getting ready to say. It's not that I felt like you know I was like, oh yeah, cool, I'm ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, whatever. Not like speed. It was just like I yeah exactly. But I was able to like like I had more mental clarity. I guess is the best way to describe it. it. It provided me mental clarity, so I was able to better focus on my tasks. So I felt more productive. It's not that I was necessarily more like energetic physically, but I was able to focus much better. Yeah, that's that was say well same for me. That was the the biggest uh, I get you know the result from it. But I definitely also like for me at least I also felt like a little like not like I said not like a speedy rush, but like a pick me up type of deal w- that went along with the well, extra focus. I also focus. drink like a monster or two a day, so I don't. Oh think it yeah, yeah. I, I had to give. I, a, dude, oof. we've talked about that before. I, I had that problem yeah. where I was drinking like four or five You're a day, four or five liver. of those a day for like months. <laughs> that's all right. It's and I, there to be regenerated. You know, I, yeah, I had to stop. Um, I don't drink that anymore. I do. I just, well, I just finished the one thing I drink like a ton of these days. And I think I've talked about this before. I'm, I'm obsessed with these the uh, the coffee seltzer water that uh, I can get, which is freaking. Oh amazing. yeah, you told me about What's that. What's the actual shit? There's a company that in, in the, up here. You know, it's like Lacroix, but called, it's coffee. Called uh, called Hal's New York that came up, came on the scene a couple of years ago and started putting seltzer water out. And, you know, originally they just had like the original and orange and lemon and whatever. You're going to have to mail me a case of that. A couple of years, like, well, no, you could buy it online. There's a place, uh, I'll send you oh, the, okay. uh, maybe I'll put, uh, if, I can't remember the name of it offline, but there's a website I found that actually sells cases It's my coffee of fanatic. She'd love it. Um, but they have, I think they have the coffee now. But anyway, uh, two years ago, they put the watermelon uh, seltzer out as a uh, as a limited edition, and I fell in love with that. I'm like, this is the most amazing thing in the world. And then this year, last year, they came out with coffee. And when I first saw it, like I did a double take, and I'm like, say what? Coffee seltzer water? <laughs> it doesn't sound good. No, no, it sounded amazing to me. And I picked it up, and uh, what should I call it? The thing is, it's got, uh, what is it got? Like 127 milligrams of caffeine or some crazy? Oh, 174 milligrams. <laughs> It's got 174 milligrams of All caffeine right. in it. Wow. I don't drink coffee anymore. I drink two of these things a day. And uh, wow. because it's just... Because okay, it's, so you do about the same that I do, essentially, just in a different seltzer form. water instead of monsters. Yeah, I, well, I cut out the sugar and everything else. I'm not drinking well, yeah, all, all so the rest do I. of the it's, stuff. It's all it's, zero it's just, carb, whatever. But yeah, it's, it's, that's essentially what ugh. it comes down to is 150 milligrams of caffeine. I love those caffeine. blue monsters. I used to drink two or three a day. I used to drink the white ones. Oh, They're so bad for well, Okay, okay, okay. But what, what I need to know, what I absolutely need to know, and what I think our audience needs to know, how do they taste? Is it like... They they don't mix black coffee flavor into seltzer water, do they? No, it, it's, it has just like a light... Uh, Almost like coffee ice cream, but not quite. I don't know. It's just oh, got like okay. this. Okay. It's got like this oh, light, just like this oh, light after geez, effect. Like it's amazing. No, no, it's it's just straight coffee, but it's just it's just got a nice. Huh. It's just got a nice aftertaste, and it's just I don't know. I drink like I said, I drink a couple. Okay, of, if you're like, into seltzer water, Lacroix has a blackberry cucumber that is that sounds oh, delicious. It's so good. Because I, I, so I like those good. two flavors, and that, that sounds no, pretty good. No, it's not. No, there's nothing good they about that. They sell them in like the six about. pack, and oh, I'll buy God. them. And the other, I bought a pack of them, and I drank all of them before I got to the house. La Croix like, no. is like, it uh, makes You're, me want to Well, once you stop drinking sugar on, once you get off of sugar. I don't on drink drink, sugar, dude. Artificial sugar. Especially yeah, artificial sugar. Isn't, isn't there artificial sugar okay. in those things, though? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, super. It it's changes super your right. palate. Yeah, it's not it's, that great. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, it changes your palate the way you way you taste stuff. Like that seltzer water. Okay. Well, you sweet. know what? Uh, you keep rocking that. I'm gonna keep rocking my artificial sugars. If it I'm like a buck seventy eight oh, now, dude. I was at two hundred. As long as you're not drink, drinking more than a couple of them a day, I'm all right with it. Because like I said, I was, I was at two eighty when we started this podcast. That's wow. Right. What are you down to now? What did you just say? 179 I weighed the over other under day. over 100 pounds in. yeah nice man <laughs> hell yeah man nice Dave all right actually round of applause for Dave we'll stop round wow, of applause wow right on Dave. Dave that's awesome man you know Catching what it was to me yeah you know what it was I forgot how big you were quitting back sugar. then that's right quitting sugar yeah quitting sugar, right sugar goes a that long way that was the man. biggest that was the biggest yeah, sugar you did, you then did alcohol what, two years right? ago and then was that about two years ago I quit alcohol yeah, yeah, yeah. About two years ago, I started all of that. Like, I, I weighed 268. I, I quit drinking hard liquor and lost a couple of pounds, but I was still drinking a shit ton of beer and sweet tea. And, and then I cut out those two things, and then that was the biggest thing holding me up. And then I cut out all sugar, and then it was just like a weight. Like, everything started working again. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I do uh, 100 push-ups or so a day. 
That's I think that's what really has helped though. Uh, and actually, that's I'm, I I'm a, starting. I'm going to start doing that as well because I am up to 190 pounds. This is the heaviest I've been in a long time, like almost 10 I'm years. Probably I think, close, I'm probably I'm probably closing on that, but I, I haven't weighed myself recently. I'm probably so, hovering. I bought somewhere. a shitty G. A, a shitty G-Shock watch off of Amazon for like nine ninety nine, and no, actually this was thirty nine ninety nine. I got a, one that was regularly seventy on sale, uh, and uh, I, I've got it going off every ninety minutes. And every ninety minutes that it goes off, I just drop and do ten push ups. Interesting. That's so legit. Man. I'm usually That's legit. That's, uh, that's I'm usually awake for method. it to equal out to. A hundred. Sometimes I do ten, like twenty at a time. So I'm trying to work myself up to four hundred a day. I don't. I don't know if that's realistic, though. Yeah. Well, it is. Cool. I can tell you this right now. No, I'm I was sure doing possible, like in excess of a thousand at my peak. So well, uh, okay. four hundred pushups and, and like function. Wait, so did, you, did you just say a thousand a day at your peak? Yeah, I actually yeah, calculated easily. it out one day. Holy uh, I calculated fuck, it out one day dude. in red phase. We were doing like a thousand pushups a day. I don't Sundays. think I've ever most, done more than a thousand push-ups in like a single eight, month. Eight hundred to nine hundred. You were training like, for <laughs> Ranger School, weren't you, Andre? No, fuck no, I wasn't. Are you kidding me? Hell I thought no. you were trying to go into something, wasn't there? You were trying to go into something? no, Maybe absolutely week, not. Still, Ranger geez. School is that's for people that just like pain. I'm sorry. I had two Nobody friends can pay me to that suck became, that hard. I literally I have two friends that are back to Navy military. SEALs Don't and join, another folks. friend that Remember. was uh, <laughs> have a, happy a ranger. Back. And I could have swore I thought you were going to be a ranger. Maybe somebody else. I want to be no, an I, and I'd had, I'd I considered it early on, like super early on when I was still, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed. Because I mean, shit, you, you know. had all the other qualifications to go right into it, right? Oh, well, yeah, I could have. But yeah. then I spent a little time in the army, you know, waiting for my turn to go to ranger school. And then I was like, yeah, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> like, it's, it, like, it's taking the suck of, of red phase from basic training and also adding on top of that no sleep, no food, and ruck marches and actually having to function tactically in that environment for, like, almost three months. And I'm sorry, but that's, that, that's too rich for my blood. I know when to tap out, man. I know when to fold. I know when to hold them and when to fold them. <laughs> And I'm folding. All right, Kenny. That's all right. You know, better men than me can do it. Well, I'm glad he didn't. <laughs> Man's got to know his limits. Man's got to know. Uh, his yeah, limits. I don't think you come back after you go into the Rangers. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Or at about, least all I, I, I got no, two friends. Well, that have well Ranger School is one, one of those things. It's just Navy school. Seal, and ne none of those guys are the same person that I knew before and after like well, I Ranger, ran into him the thing, after the thing is ranger school is just a school like every people like to think oh you go to ranger school you become a ranger you don't I knew pl I served with plenty of dudes that had ranger tabs because you go to school you get the tab which means you're qualified to be a ranger you can go and you know apply for it but that's a whole different process ranger school is just you learn uh, it, it's literally doing infantry skills and tasks under extreme conditions so mm -hmm. like no food no sleep, hours of marching on end, and then assaulting an objective, and then extraction, right? So it's, it's really just to harden you down to, like, the f sharpest blade they can make you, right, in the yeah. limited time that they have in terms of being an infantry, being an infantryman. That's really what it comes down to because rangers at their core are infantrymen. So ranger school mm -hmm. is just infantry school but, like, extreme infantry school. I mean, you learn a bunch of other cool, like, task-specific skills and shit, like, you know, how to do, you know, how to use PT boats and how to, like, ford across water and shit. Like, it's stuff like that. And so you do have some specialized skills in there, but it all relates back to, to infantry skills, right? It's all about patrolling and having, you know, proper formations and having a good uh, op order Ugh. and an assault plan and so on and so forth. It's all that planning stuff on top of the marching and the assaulting and all the rest of the stuff. It's... It's literally just infantry school, and everybody who goes through there rotates through it. all of the positions in the squad. So you'll have, like, you can have I, a PFC who's literally acting as a lieutenant for one of the phases of the school. It's it's just crazy. That's that's really what it comes down wow, to. It's just crazy it's town. super intense. But it's a school. It, it's just you go there and you get a tab. That's what it's there for. No, no, no. Like, yeah, that so it sounds beat ass. <laughs> It is beat ass. Right. It is very beat ass. The, the, our uh, our platoon sergeant, Sergeant Turner, 
who's easily one of the greatest NCOs I've ever met in my entire life. This dude is a boss. I would follow that dude to hell and back uh -huh. any day of the week. He'd call me on the phone right now, and I would bust ass to get to wherever he needs me to be. Um, but he was, I mean, statist. He's like 6'4". He's a pretty stout dude. I mean, he's not fat by any means, but he's built. He went to ranger school, and I think I lost it. Holy shit. Hmm? No, you're still uh, here. Am I still here? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Here. I think I... Yeah. Okay. I, it seemed like my shit froze for a second, so I'm sorry for oh, no, interrupting fine. in the middle of that. But anyway, so, I mean, he's a, he was a pretty built dude, right? Pretty stocky guy. Solid guy. He went to ranger school. He came back. He looked like he lost about 100 pounds, and he didn't have 100 pounds to lose. So, wow. yeah, it was... <sighs> rough he looked wow. like one of them uh he was one of them red red soldiers <laughs> after leningrad uh well not quite that bad i mean he was lean like he was super lean like he probably could have snapped they weren't one eating of wallpaper <laughs> no they weren't quite eating wallpaper but they were they were roughing it they were roughing it hard Sheesh. yeah that does not sound like fun to me <laughs> no not me can't pay me to do it same reason I'm not going to pay money to go to like a Tough Mudder competition. Why am I going to pay money? Uh, Why okay. would I pay money to suffer through five miles of shit? All right. Well, see, I never thought of it in those terms because I actually had actually, I almost signed up for a couple of those and I had planned on doing one at some point. <laughs> so but when you put it in those terms, okay, that, that makes, uh, well, whatever. No, so, I, okay. To be fair, if somebody was giving me money or if I could just go for free, yeah, that, that would actually be a pretty fun activity. But I'm not going to fork over like $150 to go to like the Spartan race just so I can suck ass for like six hours of my day. That, that well, does not strike I guess me as I, a good bargain I at guess all. It's, it's a little different for us normies who, who've never had to experience stuff like that, you know, like, under, you know, it, 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 regardless of like the extra pressure that was put in you. Like, you know, it's not an everyday thing for us. I never really experienced it. So because I have a couple of friends who did it and got hardcore into it. But I guess it's a little different from that from that perspective. If you've never gotten like, to do it. Are they like CrossFit people now? Is that all they talk about? No, they're not. He, you know, my, my, one, my <laughs> one buddy, he's, he's no, he never got that bad that Thankful. He just he just enjoys it. It's you know he's well you know he, he makes good money. <laughs> so he's, willing to, he's he's willing to spend he's willing to spend it to do this stuff. But it's just about for him he doesn't get he didn't have an opportunity like you know he could do out go out and do these things on his own. But he likes the uh, you know the com camaraderie and the whole <laughs> being at the event and stuff too. And if he can afford, I don't it, know. I, yeah, I understand. And I it. say that, and I'm probably at some point going to sign up for one. I already know. <laughs> there you go. Like, I have that feeling, and I'm going to realize it is just as let's much do one shit together. It's going to be. Let's do one together. Yeah, point. but you That'll know what? Fun. Let's do that. Let's go. Let's go as seeds of liberty. Yeah, come on, Dave. You're, you're getting you're getting spelt yes. now too, right? You can do it, Shane. I mean, I know we're old and what stuff, now? but let's uh, let's do <laughs> what now? <laughs> let's do a tough mutter. Let's yeah, let's, let's do let's... as seeds of liberty. Let's do a tough mutter. Yeah, let's or like exactly Spartan race or some shit. Or a Spartan race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you explain it? I, I mean, yeah. oh, a tough mutter. Okay. Well, it's basically it's like a it's essentially think of it as like a very long extended obstacle course. Like they're usually like I don't know five or ten miles long, and they have various obstacles like walls to climb or like some troughs of mud, troughs of mud to like crawl through and shit like that, like rope swings and shit like that. Um, hmm. They're not like they're not necessarily team events but you can you know you can have a team and you can go through it together but they're not like team oriented tasks right like you don't have to like raise each other up over a wall or some shit yeah you know? oh, okay not anything like that so. but uh you can go through it as a team and like one of the one of the events and one of these things that i i uh i that really stuck in my mind was they have a puddle of mud it's just like almost it's only ankle high and they have like a, a wooden hey, frame and then they have wires hanging down she that are fucking electrified hates me that are electrified Right, they're not. It's not like savage. It's not gonna. It's not gonna kill you or anything. But uh, it's just enough to give you a fucking a terrible shock the entire time you're going through because there's no way to avoid any of these things. It's oh my god. This, this is the level of. Yeah, suck I don't I'm know if I want to involve myself. But why don't we no, just do no, 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 uh, no, a Seeds no, of Liberty no. skeet shoot? Jeez, that's no, <laughs> no, no. We have to no. Now that it's been mentioned, we have to do it. We have to do it because we're all warriors here. Yeah, no matter on. our ages, we're all fucking warriors for liberty. Okay. Right. Uh, I don't I'll know make a man out of you yet. If, if, if at least one of the oh, guys I have knees is, is ready to do this, you, you don't ankles. really have an excuse, man. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah. You don't think I have an unfair advantage due to my cybernetic implants, though? Implants, though, do you? Well, when you go through that electroshock thing, it's probably going to be more of a hindrance to you. We're going to have to carry you out. The next <laughs> yeah, day. well, uh, yeah. It's well, gonna, no, it's going to be like now, Gender if you when really want to be when hardcore. Jacks on. If you really want to be hardcore, we all need to get protective masks, gas masks. 
we all need to put 35 pounds in a rucksack and we need to take that with us. Okay. Okay. I, I don't want those to are like the hardcore. Those are the ranger bros. Gas mask those are the on, okay? ranger bros. Okay. I don't. I don't want to be a ranger okay, bro. I, I don't want to be a ranger bro. Can we just do the stuff? Don't want to be a ranger bro. I mean, I know I can't like you know a few years back. I I what you know I I did I know that even at my 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 advancing age, I could still train for stuff. You know, like I was running like you know half marathons, and I was gonna step up. Are you a hardcore death machine stuck inside a douchebag's body? That's it. That's me, man. Absolutely. Well then, Ranger School is a school <laughs> for you. Ranger School. <laughs> Ranger. A Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Best video. Uh, of all time. You know what? You can pinpoint the the point we all became just completely fucked hopelessly at the the moment Richard Nixon won the election. Anyways, what? is there anything else you guys want to talk about? I, I disagree. Tricky Dick was the best president. I wish he'd won a second term. Oh, he would have turned this country around. Yeah. Wow. Definitely turned this, this country around. Most, hmm. Interesting. Oh, if only Absolutely. he wouldn't have stepped down as Vietnam president. Vietnam would have know? been the 51st state <laughs> in the union. <laughs> that motherfucker Guaranteed was like, it. no, nothing to Guaranteed. see here. I'm just quitting president. <laughs> yeah, Vietnam would be, but Puerto Rico still wouldn't be. <laughs> Good Hell point. no. Hell no. Puerto Rico was going to stay a territory for the rest no, of the No, but for existence. real, he, he did the drug war. He did a bunch of other shit, took us off the gold. A lot of stuff. Yep. Best president ever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, that, thanks, Nixon. That's right. Anyway. No body, but I've got a shiny new body. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> I guess we should get wrapping up since we're starting to get into the realm of the absurd. And uh, <laughs> and we are we are. I'm looking at the clock. We're starting to get close to an hour. We're anyway, always in so. the realm of the absurd. Uh, touche, touche. Anyway, so yeah, so I guess I will get wrapping up, and then uh, we'll let Shane go first, because of course, as always, Shane always, you need to speak up more, son. <laughs> All right, well, since we are recording on Memorial Day, yes, uh, I was thinking about how you know we mentioned that Ron Paul had the most support from the military, and uh, I was actually a delegate for Ron Paul back in 2008, and so I was following the whole thing Statist. really closely. And well, yeah, but we all kind of were at some point. I know. Maybe not. You and Jared Howe were both delegates just, for Ron Paul. That's wild. I know we're all born free, and subservience is a learned behavior. That's but, right. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, Ron Paul in one of the debates. Yeah, in one of the debates, he said, you know, they had they just marched in. You know, they can just come home because he was talking about the troops. And like I said, if we really cared about the troops, we would put less of them in harm's way, not more. And uh, I also think that uh, you know on Memorial Day. You know, we should honor all of our fallen and, you know, past loved ones, uh, not just the ones who served. And, you know, I don't have anything against the people who honor those who served because, you know, if they died for a cause that they, well, for the cause that they think they died for and they actually believe in it, then who am I to say that that's not, you know, worthy of their reverence? But at the same time, you know, I, I would prefer if Memorial Day. You know, we honor all of those, you know, fallen loved ones and, and past people who maybe made a difference in our lives. So not necessarily the ones, just the ones who served. There you go. Damn. <laughs> I can dig that. Yeah, man, me that. too. I'm, uh, I like that. Uh, Andre, you have uh, anything before we go, man? No, I think I think Shane summed it up. But uh, I do, you know, I just want to reiterate that, uh, you know, Memorial Day is a state holiday. We all recognize that. But uh, rather than taking that at face value and just dismissing it entirely, I think it, it bears on us, especially us liberty-minded people, to take this holiday especially and point out that these are, you know, men and women that died serving the cause of the state and why that's such an enormous folly. Because we can, I mean, we talk about what the folly is of state-funded warfare and how only the state can manage to kill off millions upon millions of people in the scale of war that they're able to, to, to marshal. So I think that, you know, using today as a platform to not only honor the dead, but to also highlight the fact that their sacrifice was only necessary because of the state is, I think, a, a really good and positive way to, to bring attention to this from our perspective. Amen. Here, here. Dave, I guess I'll give you one That's, last thing. Yeah, that was a good point, Andre. Uh, my, my, uh, my thoughts on Memorial Day uh, are that, you know, if, if there's a great book by Hop called A Theory of Socialism and Capitalism, and he breaks down succinctly why only a military 
the size of what democracies can produce can be produced through this because it's not an actual market demand that if the pricing was was if the market was allowed to price it that that not as much money would go into these militaries and all this to pay for these egregious uh encroachments on private property and for decisions to be held in such manners to create a negative for private property like hey it'd be like hey we need to figure this out instead of blowing us each other up you know basically uh and basically if we would ignore socialists and stop them in their tracks and and, and not let them get in and falsely price these things uh we would all be better off all of us the whole world yeah. amen to that amen to that all right well um, I don't even think I have much to add to what you guys were saying, um, but I, I will, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, try to bring us back all the way to the beginning. It's a good uh, candy bar. My, <laughs> my, yeah, yeah, actually one of my favorites. Um, the, what, uh, the, one of the things I've always learned from Michael Dean is, you know, always finish the stories you started and never leave people hanging. So as I tried to, as I started the show and then we got drifted off on all these conversations because Andre wanted to interrupt with his, what he had to say early on, which was, I mean, obviously wonderful and we're, I'm glad he did. Um, but, uh, the, but the, damn me for interrupting. No, no, no. I, I, I'm glad because, you know, it was funny. We, we joked before the show, you know, we kind of like, we, we really didn't know what we we're going to talk about. We just had a starting point, but that's, that's kind of what we usually do. And look, we were going along so, so, so nicely until Dave, well, you know. Dave was Dave, Boom. but anyway, we dropped uh, that. But Dave Hammer, exactly. And uh, <laughs> anyway, but what I, what I was getting at early on, and the reason we are recording on Memorial Day is obviously, you know, once again, you you guys will hear this in a couple of weeks. Um, and we're hopefully going to get at least one more show recorded because obviously as we're recording on Memorial Day, the closing of my house is supposed to happen on Thursday. And once that happens, uh, things get a little crazy for a little while. So as we've been trying to tell you guys, tell everybody for a while, you know, um, once that happens, we were going to try to have at least enough episodes stored up that we could uh, keep going for at least a few weeks, and then we will figure things out as we go. Um, so hopefully the next time you hear from us, we'll still be on schedule. But uh, anyway, that is... Uh, worst comes to worst, we'll do some live shows. Yeah. Well, we're, we're going to, like I said, well, we'll we're going to figure stuff out, but at least now we're going to have a, we're going to have a cushion again. So that, that's nice. And uh, hopefully, uh, obviously, again, since it is Memorial Day, that means I have court tomorrow. Um, so hopefully, I'll have more information about everything uh, after that, and then uh, you know, we'll, we'll figure we'll figure all that out. But anyway, uh, thank you everybody for listening. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org uh, and at uh, steamit.com slash at Seeds of Liberty. So. Once again, thank you, everybody, and we will catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Are we just making weird noises at the end? Or are we just making weird noises the whole time? This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I'm raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. 
You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.